All right, so uh, let's continue here. Uh, I've logged into my uh, LinkedIn account, and um, it has aspects of social networks um, that we've seen before, plus new ones. So when I've logged in here, uh, I have these variety of links at the top, and the very first one is under Home. This is my feed. And it tells me who's, there's 33 people that have viewed my profile, 40 people that have read my article, uh, a little bit about myself and uh, what uh, job title I have. So we'll, we'll cover these various screens because of their value, um, again, a, as, a, as a business tool or as a marketing tool. Uh, the very first screen here of, of home is where you're going to it's going to be a lot like what the um, what the other what the other ones use. So I'll make the notes here. Uh, your home screen, link various LinkedIn screens. Home, aka your feed, where you see the updates of or from your connections. That is the people you follow or are connected to directly. Because we have the ability to um, follow in a sense as well as connect with people and companies and such. Um, so what I mean here is you might have noticed there's a few items from Bill Gates. I don't know Bill Gates. I'm not connected to Bill Gates uh, directly. I'm following his posts to keep up to date with technology. But then there's also, okay, there's Richard Branson. I'm following Richard Branson to keep up to date with what he's posting. But then I've also got the content of my direct connections. Let's see if I have any examples. Um, like people I know for real. Um, oh, here we go, Patricia. So this is a real person that I know in the real world. And um, her content there is right next to Bill Gates. So I'm not connected directly to Bill Gates, but I've followed <coughs> his account. So you have those, those two abilities there. You can so follow, you're able to follow and him, but then count, you follow him, would... and you can connect. Question? Yes. Um, if you follow him, then Bill Gates can actually see that you're one of his followers, correct? Yes. Uh -huh. Does he have to alert you? Doing follows does alert them that, um, that you're watching. Um, it doesn't have to approve, because this kind of a follow is sort of like the one-to-many connections that we see in the other networks, whereas a connection is the one that I have to approve. But Without following them, correct? And then yes. that's what they would know that you tapped into their profile. Exactly. So, right? Yeah. So only if you mark only if you check that list that you're a follower, then it would Well, yes and no. Um, this says right here, thirty-three people viewed my profile. So with the free account, it just tells me basic information. So if I were to look at that, it says, you know, thirty-three people, you know, Kimberly Whitfield. Uh, and four other members looked at this stuff. Well, to unlock more detail of who looked at me, that's when I have to do the upgrade to pay for the full version of LinkedIn. So for free, you see very little information about who follows you and all of that. On the paid version, that's when you see more. Okay. Yeah. I'm not familiar with LinkedIn at all. This, I hear you. One of your first statements was it's a professional social network. So this doesn't have 
have the difference so is it just a personal no it does or, it doesn't okay so I just started setting a mock one a fake one so I didn't even know if it was a professional or by default it's a personal um, when I said over here that uh, like Facebook, you create a personal profile first and then you add a business page okay. to it. So we get by default the personal one. And then so we'll. It's an extra step. It's an extra step, and we'll look at that very soon. It's under work. Thank you. you see, we have all of this stuff of personal, and then we have a little button of work. This is then when you manage the business stuff. So it's kind of a two layer step. Though. Similar to Facebook, in that you sign in with your personal account and then you click <coughs> the little triangle to switch to the business. Two steps there, too. So that's the home screen right there, where you see the updates from your connections. And a connection uh, can be the can be like a real person you're connected to, which has been approved, or a follow if you're following a big famous person like Bill Gates, Richard Branson, um, you know, Madeleine Albright, etc. So um, that's the main screen there. Now this is also where you post new content in this home screen where you post something new for your connections. For those that follow you, or for those that have connected with you one-on-one. -on -one. And again, it is a little weird to think about those two different terms or two different ideas. You can have followers and you can have connections. And like I said, the follower, I'm a follower of Bill Gates. I don't know him. Um, he didn't approve the connection or anything like that. I followed him. And I, I just want to keep up to date with the stuff he's putting out there in public. If I were to then try to connect, he would look at his list and say, well, Victor Campos, I don't know him. Uh, and then they're going to deny the connection because we have no real connection for him to approve. And when you've got a, that sort of real connection, you get more features between each other because we know each other. We're going to connect. We'll be able to message each other. We'll be able to chat with each other. We'll be able to do that networking, that one-on-one -on -one networking, if I've got a connection. As a follow, as a follower, I don't have that ability. I can just read his stuff. I, I can click the like button and the comment and such. But I don't have that more intimate one-on-one -on -one connection as if I had done a real connection. I only have the ability to do a follow with that particular person. So in addition to um, then I can create content here. At the very top, I have share an article, photo, video, or idea. So I can write an article. I can add an image. I can add video. So um, that would be a spot for me to write anything I want, just like the other networks. And as I said on previous days about f figuring out exactly what you need to write or having or figuring out exactly what you need to do on these networks, that's, that's the part that's a little harder to teach because everyone's got a different goal of what they want out of social media, out of marketing. But this is the place. Uh, so let's say, real world example. Uh, I've got, uh, so, okay, I have Director of Technology at PMD Interactive, so there's my company. And in my company, what we do is we make websites for clients, we make, um, uh, we run social media for them, we, we make apps, etc. We do the stuff that I teach in these classes for clients. So, in theory, what I want to use LinkedIn or all my social media for, in my case, is to either do uh, customer service for people, that have hired us, or to try to get new clients, right? I would use social media to try to get more, more clients. So in my case, LinkedIn, I would have to figure out what do I need to write here to either do customer service or get new clients. In my case, let's say customer service first. And I use customer service in the terms a little bit broad in terms of usually when you say customer service you think like answering a person's question they've got a problem with a product you give them service you, you answer their question well I also use the term customer service in this other broad way that I'll, that I'll show here So uh, usually you use uh, LinkedIn or any social media as customer service or 
to get more customers. Therefore, what you post should be to those ends. And we talked about variations of that on the other networks previous days. Um, customer service is, of course, answering questions or uh, trying to fix an issue or giving something free to maybe get something back. And I'll put an example in a moment, but this is the one that a lot of times you will be engaged in giving something free to get something back. And it's not guaranteed you'll always get something back, especially doing it the free ways. And what I mean by that, uh, obviously in the real world, this is buy one, get one free. In the real world, Victor's Bakery, you come to the business, it's your first time there, you get a free cupcake. Well, I'm losing money by giving a free cupcake. But that person liked that cupcake, then they bought seven more cupcakes. So I gave something away to get something back in the real world. We see that all the time. We might have done it, we experience it, get, spend more, save more, right, in the real world. In the digital world, social media. What can I give away on social media that might get me something back in return? So here, I'm trying to get more clients, let's say. So I'm not going to give away, like, free website. That's way too much of a loss. I'm going to give away something free, like free advice, free tutorial, a free PDF with like top 10 tips for something. I'm going to give something away for free to then have to try to get people to hire us for the not free stuff. Example, Victor is trying to get more web design clients. So, on LinkedIn, he shares tutorials on basic web design. That could lead to people finding his posts and reaching out to him regarding hiring his company for web design. Best case scenario, of course. And it always isn't it, it isn't always that direct, but that's the idea that every week on LinkedIn I want to put a tutorial out there, either one that I create or that I find on some other website and share it. But every week I'm going to put out an article on a, on a topic of web design. And maybe I get some followers and they get this cool free advice. But then they need more. Uh, they need more work. They need something more complex, something customized. My, my tutorials have been useful to a certain point. But now they need to upgrade. Now they need to actually reach out to me uh, and contact me regarding, OK, well, how much do you charge to build a website? Or how much uh, I've got this budget, and what can you do for social media? And it could be that I'm posting something brand new every week for the next three months. And then finally, someone, a, a fish bites. Or I could do this for two weeks in a row, and then I get a call. You never know. It depends on so many factors. Um, who the audience is, the value of your content, even the seasons, and just a variety of reasons why it may or may not work quickly, or at all, unfortunately. But in the real world, the same thing happens. You see those radio, uh, you, see, you hear those radio ads, you see those TV ads, you see those billboards over and over and over. And, and you will never call that plumbing company, even though you see that billboard every day. But someone will see it, and someone will need that plumber, and someone will call them because of that billboard. 
but in uh, social media, it's, it's this aspect as well. So what I would do here, um, for example, over on our website, pmdinteractive.com, we write blogs, we write articles on technology, under news. The best screen recording software article, how to code anything with Code Anywhere, Visual Studio Android app tutorial. So we're writing here articles on a specific topic. Here is my article on using this software to record your screen. So this item, this link, would be a good one to share on, on LinkedIn. So I've copied and pasted the address of that article from my website and I'm about to share it on LinkedIn. Question? Why do you, on your screen, why do you have uh, the make your job search? Where, where is, because I'm on the home screen and I don't have that. That's an ad, and in my particular case, this company, not on, has boosted their post to appear, in my particular case, on my screen there. So, um, or Triple Bytes, actually. That's the company. Oh, and it says right there, ad. I see, I see, okay, I see. Okay. So they have that sort of way that looks a little different than the other company, the other networks. Okay, so ultimately, uh, I'm trying to get hired uh, to do web design or to do tech jobs and that sort of thing. The, the people in my company and myself were trying to get hired. So here I'm giving away this little bit of free stuff like this. I'm putting in this article to this particular topic, and it might result in, in a call or an email and such. So I've got this content that... It will be linked keywords the best screen recording software and this links back to my website this assumes I put the uh, this assumes I created this article on my website this assumes I have something to share so just because I've got the account I can't quite start using it right away with some, without some content and it's okay to get an article from some other website. I showed you InvestorJunkie.com and MSN.com and uh, Money.com and such. You could use articles from there. Those are public articles that you can use and put it on your, on your profile here. But again, what's the point? I'm not trying to sell myself as a financial uh, consultant. Uh, so it may or may not work. But what I would further write here is uh, looking for some great free software to record your screen. Do you need to share the steps when setting up a word macro? This article uh, explains <coughs> introduces you to OBS, a great um, app for doing just that. So this text that I'm writing here has these various keywords. Free software. Record your screen. Word macro. So I'm writing something that has that explains what the link is, and it's got the keywords that people may search for because just like every other network, I've got that search at the top. And when you search uh, in in the network, when you search inside of the network, it gives you results in the network. This is different than a Google search. The Google search shows you results all over the web. So um, the, um, 
the results would appear here if someone were to search. And that link is to your website? Yes. This came from our website, an article on our website. It automatically creates a little preview of it, which is an active link. Post settings, public, public and Twitter. So this would automatically also be sent off to Twitter if I've got Twitter connected. And or, or instead of public to connections. So we have those different things that are built in there. We have those different ways of sharing the post. When sharing, you can publish to public, public plus Twitter, and what do they call it? Connections? Yeah, connections. So anyone can see this, anyone can search, find, read this, public, same, and goes to Twitter, goes to your Twitter. So that assumes you've got a Twitter account, and that assumes you've, assumes you've connected it, and you connect it in the settings in there somewhere. You connect it, or connections are only to those that have connected with you. Yeah. Is Twitter the only one you can connect public plus Twitter, or is that just a few that set Um, I have or to. Do public plus Definitely not Instagram because that that one works a lot different. Uh, that, that one in general is very locked down. Almost nothing can connect to Instagram except Instagram. Um, I, have, I have to check if Facebook is allowed or not. But um, this is just so that when you publish this on LinkedIn, it automatically also goes to Twitter. You're not prevented from after the fact then also publishing it to Facebook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it needs to go over to your Twitter account. It needs to go somewhere. It doesn't just go to everyone on Twitter. It needs to go to your Twitter account, and they need to be connected. Yeah. Now, it's Facebook, it's Facebook and Twitter connected. So you could LinkedIn connect to Twitter. Twitter connects to Facebook, and, you know, and Facebook then goes to It does go to Instagram. Now that you're on it. Is there a way to build a chain like that, or not just to... No, there, there is a way to do that. Uh, the default features don't quite work like that, um, but you have, you have the ability to chain it together. Um, did I mention it on a previous class? Uh, Buffer.com. This is the one where we can use to connect multiple accounts together and send them all to the same place. I mean, to all of them at the same time. So um, I I think I might have mentioned this before, but if not, it's good to mention again. Buffer.com. You connect your networks together. You put your LinkedIn, your Facebook, your Twitter all into this Buffer account. And when you share something on one uh, network, it can go to all of them at once. No, this is... It's different. Yeah, RSS is pretty passe nowadays, so you, won't, you don't really see it that much anymore. It's an aggregator. It is. It's like web one. It's like web one .0. Yeah. Is that the website? Can you use that website also to uh, schedule postings to? The yes. Website? This is the one you can also use yeah. to schedule. Yeah. So I'm going to say this one can go public. I'm also going to say allow comments. Remember I mentioned uh, you can do social media as a dialogue or as a monologue. The monologue is that you post stuff on your social media and you never reply. You never allow people to reply to you. You just keep it a one-way conversation. And um, for most of us, 
I don't recommend to do the monologue. For most of us, I recommend the dialogue, meaning, yes, let people comment. You have the extra step of keeping people in line and letting, and then approving their, their comments and all of that. But then that creates that community and that creates a connection between real people. We see so many ads all day long in real life and in digital life that we get numb to them or we actively avoid them. But when we have these connections with real people, those are often stronger and give you better results. So simply letting people reply to your, to your posts shows that you are you know, a real company, a, a, uh, a valuable company, and um, you're always able to remove the negative comments and such. Now post that. No. Buffer.com, do I get to monitor everything that's that's on all of my different You will get stats, yes, on buffer.com, but you will get better stats when you upgrade your buffer plan. You get the free one. And to respond, I still need to go to the individual. Yeah. Yeah, the best, to my knowledge, the best it can do is publish these posts to the different uh, networks at once, yes, and give you some data about how it's going. But to actually do the replies and such, you still have to go to the network itself and then do the replies. So I can go into the buffer.com and say, okay, I got six notifications on Instagram, nothing on Facebook. 12 on Google Plus, I need to go into websites and address the notifications. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's kind of sort of the same Yes. Um, yeah, that's, it's a, I really, I like Buffer, yes, it is a good management because, uh, yeah, it's so much to do. If you're learning all these networks, there's a lot to, to do. But if you've got that manager, that aggregator, like Buffer, and there's other ones, but I like Buffer. Uh, it does help you manage it a little easier. Now, just as a test here, so I've published this, and if you're logged into LinkedIn, um, try to try to do this. I haven't checked it yet. It might be too new, but try this. On your search box there, see, search for the best screen recording software and see if this article pops up. Right there at the top there, the best screen recording software let's just see what happens I don't I don't know what I'll get since I'm searching on my own thing but we'll see so the best screen recording software that's that's what this is titled over here and it may be too new it hasn't fully propagated or spread out everywhere so then when I scroll down over here these are of people, locations, connections, content. Well, this is this is the thing. If you do the search here, the default um, it's showing people, but at the top, show me results of people, jobs, content. Let's try switching to content. So under content, do you see that? Three minutes ago right here. So, so um, the default was showing me people, but then there are these actual, there's actual content, there's actual articles. So um, obviously I expect all of you to click like on that. I'm just kidding, but uh, there's, the, uh, there's the thing. I posted something and uh, it's visible all over LinkedIn, over 500, 500 million users. Now, of course, someone had to have been searching for that topic. They had to have been searching screen recorder software. Maybe even simply searching for, let's say, screen recorder. Let's see if it has to be that exact terminology. Screen recorder. Try that. Just screen recorder. Does it pop up with screen recorder? All right, so it seems to be smart enough in the old days, you know, a long time ago in the old days, five years ago, it wasn't as smart. 
it had to be exact phrases. So then we'd have to put a bunch of variations of the word in our article and it would look spammy. Well, as these, as these networks get a little smarter, I didn't really say, um, okay, I wrote the word record and screen. I didn't write recorder. And then down here, it's screen recording. So it's smart enough when I put screen recorder that it saw the variations of the word record and then the article showed up there. So what I'm getting at here is we've talked about it in a variety of ways on the different networks previously, but here it is again. There is a search inside of the network, and people are going to be using it. Maybe you've never used it or you've never thought of using it, but people that perhaps use the network a little bit more or are curious or understand, well, search helps me find, are going to search, and if you've got content on these topics, your content could appear. Well, again, I'm not saying here, hire us to do X, Y, and Z. I'm doing the part here where I've said using the networks in terms of um, customer service. In terms of giving something for free, and I may get something back. It may be a like, a reply, a share, a follow, or a buy, or a hire me. Remember again, once again, all of the important actions. We got like, reply, share, follow, buy. All of them in every single network has these options. Not options, actions. I can like something on Twitter, I can like something on LinkedIn, I can plus something on Google Plus, I can I can do the ex surprised expression on Facebook, all the same. I can reply on all of these networks, asking a further question, or a person replying simply saying, great job, or very useful. I can have a share. My article was so great that someone found it and shared it to their followers. So now I've reached the 100 connections I have, plus the 200 that they have, I reached 300 people. And maybe out of those 300, one of them needs to hire me for a certain thing. For that idea. The next level is up the, is the follow, um, which is then now they've chosen to sort of subscribe to me and they want to see everything that I'm that I'm up to. Um, and then of course the biggest one, the most important one usually is buy and whatever you're trying to do online. I'm trying to get hired, I'm not really selling anything. Yeah, I'm selling my service. They're gonna buy my service. Um, so the common actions on all networks again. And they, are, and they go in that value. Likes are nice, but they're the least valuable. Not worthless, just the least valuable. Replies are a little bit more worth it because I'm identifying more people that are more serious. If they took the time to reply, they're a little more serious than just a like. You know, they click like, they move on. A reply is a little more effort. Share is also very good because it helps me go viral. It helps me spread my word to more people. Follow is even better because someone has chosen to be my captive audience, and of course buy is the best because I sold something. So um, this is the, that's the big idea with this home screen. You either see the stuff of other accounts that you've connected with, or you create content. And just like I've talked about the other uh, the other networks, um, you want to be active. And what was the minimum that I said, or the beginner level for the other networks of activity? How often to post? Once a week. So at least once a week, post something on the networks. And by now, we've talked about like five different networks, or six, or something. Um, you don't have to be active in them all. Um, you can pick one or two, but after we do the overview of the different networks, then you can decide which is the best one for you, for your business which one you can put the most effort into. My network up here is where you're going to see current connections and possible connections. I have 101 that I'm connected with. Again, I'm not using this as a popularity contest like I might with other networks. Um, there's people all the time that are asking to connect to me. Right now it says 19. When I have a moment, I'm going to look at them and probably uh, ignore most of them. 
because I want to only connect with those that are valuable to me. Just as a quick look here, so Raul is a former student. He's very good at web design and such. He's trying to connect with me. He's trying to use social media. My connection in, in, so in LinkedIn, that is, he's trying to use it to advance himself. And that's fine. You want to use LinkedIn to advance yourself. There's no value for me to connect to him, probably, because I've got enough people on my team already in PMD Interactive. I don't need another web designer on the team. I, I can't hire another one. So there's no reason there. Former student, well, that's fine, but what does that matter? You know, not, not to be mean. But there's no real connection for me to approve that. There's no real reason for me to approve that connection. I could, I suppose, go to his profile and read all of what he's about and see his credentials and see that he's done this and that. And you just click their icon. So I could go there and see what, what's, what's the value. Now, he does, he will see over on his home feed, Victor Campos looked at your profile. So if you're okay with that, you can click on people's profiles. And if they've got the premium version, they will see more detail about who looked at you. So perhaps just by looking at it under here, you can make your choice ignore or accept. But in my case, probably will ignore. They don't have any value for me. And again, I tell people in these classes, uh, don't get discouraged if I ignore the connection. If it's not valuable for you to connect to me, I won't. And if you're a current student, I also won't, because that's a conflict in the class. Question? Even though you don't accept uh, Raul's stuff, you can look at his folks and see if you see anybody that you could connect with that way. Exactly. But then they will, be, they will know that you've looked at their, connection, at their profile. When they log in on their home screen, yeah. they will be able to see who's viewed my profile. They go there, and then it's going to show Victor looked at your profile. Then they're going to say, he looked at my profile, but why didn't he accept me? So you be have careful. Your privacy settings, of course. Yes. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah, because you can see somebody who is crazy that wants some group. That's why you can connect there. Yeah, and, yeah and there is that. If you have a role, you can see somebody that's valuable to your... Exactly, that's the value, friends of friends. Yeah. So that's why you may want to connect with one person to get to another person. Yeah. Even though you don't have to click with that little guy, you can see that some of these yeah. associations that you might want to connect with. That yeah, for my value, yeah. yeah. For your value, yeah. Mm -hmm. Question? So, yours is set up that uh, you have to put an email address to connect you. Uh, I have to check that, but yes, most likely because, again, I, I want to use it in terms of how is it most valuable to me to connect with people. So I might have a little extra layer there uh, to, to kind of weed out people, and again, not trying to be mean and all of that, but I want to connect with those that are going to be valuable to me, what what I get the use out of. So uh, by putting an email uh, that uh, shows LinkedIn that you're a legitimate account, sometimes it's spammers and they're just trying to make connections like the other networks full of spam, so there's that extra step. Uh, I just spammed you. No, okay. <laughs> I sent you a connection request. Okay, great. I'm going to go look at your profile and see if you're worth it. And let's see if it popped up here already. Show more. I'm not there yet. Yeah, there it is. I sent it to your EDU. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's the problem. I don't have this account set up under EDU. I've got it under my company email address. So uh, here's an example also. Okay, if, this, if I'm saying to use um, LinkedIn especially selfishly, well, when, when you try to connect with someone else, you might have that roadblock as well. Other people might say, well, why would I connect with you? I don't know you. Irina right here is doing it a pretty good way. Um, I might not remember who, who is this. I, I get a lot of people. She also wrote a note that said, Victor, I've taken your mobile class. OK, now I remember who you are. Yeah, that's what I do. But I'm still going to click ignore. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> what I'm saying is when you try to connect to other people, it gives you a spot there to say, why are you trying to connect, or who are you? I really recommend that you take that moment. 
well, just, just a moment. I really recommend that you do that in order to show people who you are and what's the value of connecting with them. So don't just do the send a request. There's, there should be a spot there to write why you're trying to connect. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm trying to make a connection. Use the Y box, whatever it's called. I'll see in a moment. I'm going to try to make a connection. Use the Y box to uh, explain why you are a good connection. Why you would make a good connection. Yeah, if they don't reply, there's plenty of other fish in the sea, hopefully. Yeah, exactly. And, and again, um, the, yes, it's a social network. We want to be social and all of that. But again, really, when I teach this and when I do it for clients, you want to use LinkedIn very selfishly. You want to use it. What's in it for me? Um, you know, I don't want to help you, and I know that's a very mean way to say it, but I want to help myself. I want to help my business grow. I want to, I want to improve my standing, and if connecting with you helps me, then I'll do it, and that's perfectly fine. You'd be, be a good and nice person everywhere else in life, but maybe not in LinkedIn, because you want to uh, connect and make the best connections how to do that. Let me just see where that's at. Let's say I'm going to, uh, I don't know, just do John Smith. There might be more than one on LinkedIn. So um, some people, if they're trying to connect, they says send in mail. Some of them say connect. I'll get to that later. But if I'm trying to connect with someone, LinkedIn members are more likely to accept these that include a personal note. There it is. So when I find, oh, it's dark, but when I try to find a person and then I see their results right there and then I click connect, that's when it's going to pop up to tell me uh, to send a connection along with a little note or not. So those that have just click, simply clicked send shows me they don't have 10 seconds to also include a note. So I don't have, I don't need 10 seconds to click ignore. Yeah. So, okay, so I, every time I click accept on, on somebody who's reached out to me, <coughs> then they, they appear down in the bottom and it still says it asked to connect. So when you clicked it, when you clicked accept here, it still shows up here? Yeah. Try to refresh the screen because sometimes or reload the screen, sometimes what it shows you in one spot is redundant somewhere else, and when you do it here, it doesn't change there. Yeah. So just try to reload or refresh the screen. If it shows up again, just ignore it, because if you know that you clicked accept, it got done. And if it's still down there, just ignore it. It's just sometimes there's little bugs in this thing that even though you know you've done something, it shows it to you twice. Go under my network. Can you reconnect with someone? You can if you did ignore at one point. Uh, you can reconnect, but then now you have to do the initiative and find them again. And when you find them, then you click the connect button. If you already ignored it, it doesn't remember that anymore. It just stays right there as long as they're trying to connect with you. If you do if you do the ignore like that, you know, it, it moves it away. It's like, I, I don't know, it, it went away. And how about, for example, I want to connect with someone, mm -hmm. and later on I want to cancel it. Let me see, okay. that's going to be over here. <laughs> <laughs> After you've made connections, here in the My Network screen, it says, view all of my connections. So when I go here, see all, here's everyone I'm connected with, and actually Jose has not been that valuable, remove connection. 
So you see there, the, the My Network screen is where we manage new connections. And then the See All will show you your current connections. This is like unfollowing. So you see all. You see everyone here. And then, OK, well, Constantine, click there and remove. So my network screen. Approve or ignore, or how do they call it? Accept or ignore connections. Click to view a person's profile to confirm if it's a good connection or not. Remember, only connect if you benefit. You can search. For people to connect to, you should add a note why it's good to connect with them. So it even LinkedIn even tells you right there. It says something like 70% of connections happen when you add a note. And still people click send without adding a note. And they wonder, why didn't I connect with that person? Why didn't they approve me? As I showed you there, Irina did it the right way. She told me, I used to be your student, I took your mobile class, and if I read the rest, probably it'll say, you know, I want to connect, I think it'll be valuable, and maybe we'll have a partnership or, or something. So again, I have to decide, is it valuable uh, to connect with a former student, number one? Is it valuable for me to connect with someone regarding apps? I teach apps. In my company, we make apps. Do I need to connect with another person that knows apps? Maybe I can reach out to them on a case-by-case -case basis, external contractor, to have them work on an app that we're going to work on later. Maybe it'll. Maybe they're a good source of knowledge that I can reach out to them and say, hey, I'm having this little problem in my app. Do you know any ideas or where can I look? They might give me that answer. But if it's valuable for me, I will connect. And if it's not, I will ignore. I can click ignore. They never get a notification that says, Victor ignored you. It won't do that. It'll just, nothing will happen. They won't know. And then if they go out of their way to go look at their connections and they don't see you there, then they'll say, oh, he never accepted me. But it will never tell them, Victor ignored you. It, it just, it'll just go away. And there are a few people that I have clicked ignore and they keep asking to connect. So it's like, I don't know what to do about that. I guess there's a block button, but I don't know if I want to be that mean. I'll just be a little mean. Yes. So there is no privacy on Facebook. There is privacy. Um, we'll see that when we get over to the profile. On the default, everything that you put is public. But there is a way to make these things private under me, under settings. And um, we'll look at that a little later, but you can start looking at it there. You can go to your privacy to, to, to show to set what can be visible or not. And what I've got there, everything, it's pretty public. It's fine that everyone sees it in my case. For the stuff that I want to present in this account, I'm fine that everyone can see it. But for a lot of us that we, maybe we're running our business out of our house and we don't want to put our, our home address and all of that, of course, I want to keep that private. And under your privacy settings there, you have that control. Yes? Um, so if you don't put a LinkedIn account, No, but like I tried to show earlier, before I had logged in, I tried to view my account. Mm -hmm. And it popped up to say, please sign in. So I think LinkedIn is getting more, more uh, obvious about that, that in order for you to look at anything, you have to be logged in. And just, you know, last year, in the last year, I have been able to look at people's LinkedIn accounts without logging in. I don't doubt that they've changed it for you that you have to be logged in because all of these networks want people to join it to be in the network so that you just like on Facebook give away your information so that then you can do ads and boosts and such to reach the right audience so the value of a person to the network is that they've got an account and they're logged in people that are logged out are not valuable to them so they keep wanting you to log in yeah I wasn't sure like I connected with Facebook and 
makes you like your Facebook profile or something. No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't show that. If you're logged in on Facebook, it shouldn't show you any info because you're not in their network, and they can only capture the information in the in the network. Mm -hmm. So you can click. What's it called over here? Um, your connections see all. manage them. You can unfriend them there. Let's take one more break. We'll, we'll then uh, go off and look at the business side of things right after the break. Personal stuff. Well, jobs, that makes sense. You're, you're trying to get hired or you're trying to put a job listing. Messages, I won't click on that one, but messages there is connecting, you know, talking one-on-one -on -one with people. And then notifications is like the other networks that show you what's, what's been happening, who has followed you, who has replied to your messages, and things also like congratulate Kareem and six others for work anniversaries. So as you... As you add your jobs and stuff here, it keeps track of it, and then the networks will say, oh, Victor has been 10 years at San Diego Continuing Education, and my friends will then be alerted of that, and then you can click it or ignore it, like I will. So the personal stuff, the important part is home and network, then jobs, depending. Post a job, looking for a job, but I will say also, just like um, the other networks, Especially under posting, you might have to pay for some of these to get the best features. It's uh, 11.45. We'll take a break until 11.55. When we come back, we'll look at this little button of work. Teacher. This one.